Joining us now is Senator Rand Paul. Senator, thank you. Good to have you here this evening. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, obviously, you asked a question today that was shut down by Chief Justice Roberts. Um, anybody who wants to hear the, con the whole text of that question and the names that you included, it's on your Twitter feed. And you talked about it today, and I would direct them there. Um, but I'd ask you not to say them here. Uh, and I would love to know what you wanted to get out of the question and why you feel it's so important to focus on the origins of this investigation and to bring that point home. You know, my question did not identify anyone as a whistleblower or refer to anyone as a whistleblower, but my question did discuss two Obama partisans who worked in the National Security Council. Uh, one of them now works for Adam Schiff, and one of them is uh, someone who is involved in the origins of the impeachment inquiry. So these two people have been friends for a long time. There are stories and reports now that they, a few years ago, were overheard saying, you know what, we got to do everything we can to bring down the president, to take down the president. And lo and behold, these two friends are still intimately involved, and the story even thickens from there. There are three people working for Adam Schiff's staff who used to work for the national security staff. They know this third gentleman. They all know Vindman. You know, Vindman's been very prominent in the testimony mm -hmm. and Vindman's brother. So we actually have six people who were Obama partisans who work for the National Security Council who all are transmitting stuff back and forth. And my question is, did they have discussions predating the official impeachment inquiry? Maybe predating even by a year or two. We know that Adam Schiff was dishonest when he said there was no contact. It turns out they did have contact in the days and weeks leading up to the, the impeachment inquiry, but it may well be that they had contact even a year or two before, and I think people ought to be able to, to discuss that. So I was yes. disappointed that that uh, question was shut down. Well, I, I think that, you know, the question of the origin of this investigation, just like the questions of the origin of the Russia investigation, are certainly valid questions to ask. One of the problems I think that's frustrating for people watching all of this is that there's really no, no forum here. There's no cross-examination. I mean, you know, even if your question had been asked, you know, what, what would be the best you could have hoped for in terms of what would happen when Adam Schiff got up and, and tried to answer it? Well, Adam Schiff's not really answering questions. So you would actually have to have him in a deposition under oath. And yep. that's why if people want to have witnesses, Adam Schiff's going to have to be a witness. But so is Sean Misko, who's on his staff, and maybe several other people on his staff, because they need to be asked, were they coaching and helping this complaint, not only in the days preceding the impeachment complaint, but maybe even weeks and months before? Were they simply looking and waiting for some kind of bit of evidence that they could create and craft into an impeachment complaint? And that's not the way the whistleblower statute was meant to be. It wasn't meant to be some sort of blanket immunity from knowledge. But one of the telling questions, you know, we've had hundreds of hours of testimony now, but Senator Burr asked today, he said, well, would it be impeachable to hire a foreign spy from Britain to get a dossier on someone like what happened to President Trump? Because they're now saying a lot of things are impeachable. And that's the problem with having this low level or low standard for impeachment is that, you know, I had a lot of policy disagreements with President Obama, but I didn't call to impeach him. And that's the problem is if we lower the standard and dumb it down, everybody's going to impeach everybody and it's going to be a disaster for our country. All right. So, so, but there are other ways. And the name that you mentioned is, is someone else is one of the people that you mentioned in your in your tweet before and he is still currently working for for he's on the staff still correct yeah sean misco is sitting there he's he's in the senate chamber yeah. with two right, other so people the, that, and that's who not, actually that's, there's nothing secret about that um but but let me ask you you know when for people who because i you know just looking at your twitter feed today you know about half of the people who respond think that you should be yeah. arrested they think that you're a communist <laughs> and working for the russian government the other half think you're a hero which is not yeah. atypical for the responses that you sometimes get because you do put yourself out there um, uh, on these issues. But how, you know, for anybody at home who says, yeah, I'd like to know the answer to these questions, why doesn't the Senate Judiciary Committee or the DOJ, someone start to look into this just as we saw happen with the origins of the Russia investigation? Is that going to happen? Well, maybe eventually. But see, I think what we've done is we've overblown this sort of idea of whistleblower protection. Look, I am a big defender of whistleblowers. Eric Snowden, probably the biggest, uh, you know, uh, Edward Snowden, probably the biggest whistleblower of all mm -hmm. time. But many people want to put him in jail and kill him, even though he's a whistleblower. He, he revealed something we were doing unconstitutional, and then our government actually changed. We actually passed laws because we were so worried about what he revealed. And yet a lot of people have mixed feelings about it. Same way with this whistleblower. 
if this was a concocted plot to bring down the president, that's not something the whistleblower statute is about. But also the whistleblower statute doesn't guarantee that you're anonymous. It guarantees that you're not fired. So I don't want to fire the whistleblower, but I think the president deserves that this whistleblower come forward. And I never identified anybody as a whistleblower. That's why it's unfair to exclude my question. Right. I'm just I, I identifying just, people who are friends and who are against the understood. president and plotted against the president. I'm about to talk to Senator Van Hollen, and, and this is something that he said earlier today, and so I want to give you a chance to respond to what he said because he's, he's going to, you know, I'm sure build on that in a moment. He says this is absolutely repug repugnant. Doing this would st send a statement to any future whistleblower. If you use legal channels to expose abuses of power, you will be retaliated against. We live in a democracy, not an autocratic state. What do you say to that, Senator? Yeah. You know, I think uh, we're on different wavelengths here. We see what the uh, Clintons did in purchasing foreign information to go after President Trump as being awful. The fake FISA warrants, all of the FBI lying 17 times. Uh, I think all of that was a great abuse of power. And the great irony of this entire impeachment hearing now is they're using government to go after their political opponents. They're mad that they say President Trump did it. They're doing exactly the same thing in a very partisan way, which every one of them said during the Clinton impeachment was a problem. They're now doing exactly right. the same thing. So hypocrisy's a, you know, if the shoe fits, wear it. But they're they're hypocritical on all so, this. La last question: Did you think there was anything wrong with the phone call? Did you see it as a as a request for a, a political favor? In making it very, very hard for the country to have anything that we can do together. It's very polarized, it's divisive, if anybody has seen it, and well, I think it's a big mistake for, sure. for them to do it. Um, Senator, thank you. Good to see you tonight. Thank you. Senator Paul. Thank you.